The Rose Bowl at that time was the was the big the big bowl. This is the Rose Bowl. This is the granddaddy of them all. You know, it really was the big postseason football game. It still is today, obviously. It was kind of the East versus the West at that time. But it was still that pure Americana game with the festivities that go around it. After an unprecedented 1941 football season, Oregon State's 7-2 campaign was capped by an invitation to their first ever Rose Bowl. And for a small rural agricultural school, that was a huge achievement. Really, it symbolized something. This was much more than just a football game for Oregon State. This was a chance for the institution, after decades of existence, to really get on the national map. Already on the map were the Beavers' opponent, the Duke Blue Devils. Duke was undefeated and ranked number two. So on paper, it looked like a great matchup. Duke and Oregon State fans rejoiced, and the teams began preparations for travel to Pasadena, California. But all that was about to dramatically change. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air, President Roosevelt has just announced. Most of us uh, heard it over, we heard it over the radio. And it was, I think it, uh, the best one word, shock. We were just uh, shocked by it. And we were thinking, uh, what's going to come now? What's, what's our next step? I think many students, including the football players, said, well, we knew it was coming, it's time to fight. They all wanted to be a part of the Rose Bowl, but they also knew what their future held, and that future was going to be war. The nation was in mourning. The country was at war. Still, preparations for the Rose Bowl in Pasadena continued. Tickets were about to be mailed out, the teams were practicing, scouting was going on. But there was a little murmur across America of should this game even be played. There could be an attack on the West Coast, especially from Japanese bombers. And ultimately on Saturday, just six days after Pearl Harbor, the game was canceled. Almost immediately, offers came in to host the Rose Bowl from Chicago and Memphis and Baton Rouge and Washington, D.C. The best offer came from Duke University itself. And about 48 hours later, it was announced that it would be an official Rose Bowl with Tournament of Roses sanction but played in Durham. You mean we're going to play it in Durham? Uh, nothing against Durham, but uh, you know, it's a big difference between Pasadena and California. I think the first impression was just a little questioning, and uh, then it was, uh, let's get down to business. So, Coach Lon Steiner's Oregon State Beavers traveled 3,000 miles on the Portland Rose, dubbed the Beaver Express, to face Wallace Wade's favored Duke Blue Devils. Oregon State went into that Rose Bowl game in Durham as three to one underdogs. Duke was more powerful, they were undefeated, they were the national brand. All along that week leading up to the game, Lon Steiner thought his boys were having good practices and he thought they could hang with Duke. He was probably the only one. It was a sloppy day, windy, rain, cold, as we were coming out of the under the playing field, uh, somebody, I don't know who it was, said, uh, what are we doing here? <laughs> it was a back and forth game, sloppy turnovers, puns for possession. Finally in the third quarter, Bob Deathman, one of the stars for Oregon State, lofted a pass. Receiver Gene Gray went up, made the catch, juked a couple defenders and went in for a 68 yard touchdown score, which at the time was the longest pass play in Rose Bowl history. There were some tight moments towards the end of the game, but ultimately, Oregon State prevailed 20 to 16 in a huge upset. But Oregon State's Rose Bowl celebration was overshadowed by the reality of our nation at war. So even though it was a celebratory trip home, I think there was a stark reality for these boys of what laid ahead. 29 of the 31 players on the Oregon State Rose Bowl team served their country during World War II. Four players from that 1942 Rose Bowl game ultimately lost their life. 
At least two of them, the only possession on their bodies was the Rose Bowl ring. Football also saved a lot of lives in war. There were a lot of these players that were in tough circumstances, and they admittedly post-war thought to themselves, I never would have survived that had it not been for Lon Steiner or Wallace Wade. Their voices were in my head. You can make it. You can do more. You don't, you don't give up. You keep giving everything you've got. I think it's a, a story of determination, of service, and I think it's a reminder to all of us of, of just what it means to sacrifice.